Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. If you missed previous videos, you, you can check them out on the top right or in the description down below, there will be a link to the previous videos. So we went through a lot of testing, like making samples, also like interacting on your questions. So that's very cool, like to have good interaction with you guys. A lot of you guys seems to like these video series. So I'll continue till we get to like perfect forged carbon fiber and like, like more complex parts later on. In the previous video, we tested some carbon fiber samples to like see where they break. In this video, I'll go a bit further into like real forged carbon. So it's a first sample, it's not a lot, but it should give me some ideas on how I should design the molds for later parts. So we'll go later on to getting real parts in forged carbon. So I also infused a bigger part just to see like the angles, to see how complex we can get. Um, and here are some numbers and like a, a video edit that I did to compare both of them because a lot of you were asking for it. So here are the numbers and you can see like compared to each other. So on the left you have regular uh, 650 gram square meter twill weave carbon fiber. On the right you have chopped. So I also tell you a bit more, we are not really comparing the chopped, it's more like the veal that is behind the chopped. Um, but this should give you like a good reference and show you the big difference in strength on a flex you get. So I got some questions, like more remarks about how I did the testing. Um, I know it's not a perfect scientific testing to get like a number of strength in newtons or um, <laughs> like more complex uh, measurements. It's just like a reference between left and right, just to give you a comparison. So as you can see, there's a big difference, like in the flex you get. And we also add like a lot of more weight. So here on the left, you can see I was able to add 2.85 kilograms extra. So it's like giving you a good idea to see how the uh, 12 weave in a way is much stronger. So I was expecting that up front. So here, here we have a graph and this should give you an idea. So it's like more of a linear curve till it would break. So it's, um, it's like, like a quite remarkable difference you get on these both samples. So here I was testing some more um, infusions. So why, why am I doing the infusions? It's more to get like a good knowledge of the material. So to know the flow, see where problems may occur while we be doing this with RTM or with pressure later on. So this was a mold that I have left, left um, here around and I was able to do some bigger testing than the small uh, speed shape that I did in the previous tutorials. So what I'm doing with the leftovers, I'm just, I had some resin left, I just add some fibers and maybe later on I could use it as a coaster or do some samples um, with CNC milling maybe on a chopped carbon fiber. So here is the result. So. Um, uh, in a way, I wasn't expecting this because normally with a regular infusion, I would get good results. But you can see that with the, in my opinion, this is what happens is um, a difference in thickness of the chopped, like on top of each other, um, causing some problems with the um, wetting out of the fibers. It was also a fast infusion. Normally I would get away with it on a regular infusion with just like a 12 weave. So just to confirm my suspiciousness on why these problems occurred, it's to do a slower infusion. So if you're having problems with your infusions, having pinholes and such, um, a good idea is to have a slower infusion and have like a bigger um, break, resin break area at the end. So this is what I did. I had a bigger mold just to be able to have more um, of a resin break and a slower infusion. And as you can see in the results, like here we're getting like spot on perfect finish. So expect, except for the dullness of the molds, this is a pinhole free part that I was able to clear coat and send to a customer. So like these tests are more, like I said, to understand a bit more about resin flow because resin flow will be interesting to know for future like testing and uh, experiments by doing this under RTM technique. So under, uh, like VAR, VARTM is like with the um, vacuum bag 
and RTM is with a hard shell as the like that would replace the vacuum bag. So you would save some time with the vacuum bag by just having a hard shell on top and doing the infusion. So what we are doing here, so we are starting with the first experiments with forged and like why I'm doing these experiments, like I'm saying, I'm not going for like a chopped look because this is what a lot of people are doing now. So you can buy sheets of um, chopped fiber on a roll. I cannot get them here in the in Europe, not easily at least. Um, there are some manufacturers in the US making these on a sheet so you can cut them out and put them in your mold, do an infusion on it. But I'm looking for like real forged carbon. So where you just add the fibers in the mold, you add some resin, add some pressure or with RTM where you just inject the resin at the end. So why we are looking for this technique is just to have like a big uh, improvement in uh, manufacturing. So you can make more parts a day on like, um, it's a more complex system, but you can produce way more parts than with the um, VARTM, so resin infusion technique. So what I'm doing here, so I'm preparing the molds. I've added some resin on the chopped fibers. This is that at this stage, I'm not looking for like the perfect resin to fiber ratio. I could measure it out with the samples we did before and the infusions. Um, I know this was going to be a very heavy part on like on the resin side. So I'm adding a lot of resin. I'm just looking now for the best finish with the least amount of time being put into this. So this is a simple mold, a simple part. I'm just looking to get like more knowledge out of the technique because sometimes on paper, things will be different than on like in real life. So what I did is add some uh, wax strips. So it's two millimeters thick and a silicon core to add the pressure. So we'll get way more pressure with this technique than with vacuum. At vacuum you get minus one bar. Uh, with the clamps that we will be using, you could get up to two or three, maybe even more. I didn't even measure it, but you can add a lot of more force by using uh, pressure. So the clamps were added, all the excess resin is now dripping out. And after a day, you can demold the parts. And this wasn't even after a day, I did it um, later at night because I just wanted to see the results. I'm not going for like a perfectly cured part. I just want to know how the fibers were aligned into the molds and what happened to the resin. So pretty happy with the results. At first sight, this is a very good finish. So a good result to start with. The only thing is that some fibers were pushed down into the molds while I was applying the silicon core. So that's a small problem. So I'm happy I did it with this test. So I know how I should align the fibers a bit better in the mold. So a bit more overlap uh, over the edge uh, to avoid the fibers being like being pulled down into the mold as well. So this was it for this video. I hope you liked it. Give this video a like. Don't forget to have some comments or requests for future videos. In the next video, probably we will start designing a good mold for the RTM technique and improve like or forged, like real forged uh, carbon fiber parts. So thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.